السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Good morning everybody Today in شاء الله we will continue talking about a new chapter which is basically about solutions Uh, and so far, uh, we study the different states of matter, the gas state, the liquid state, the solid state. Uh, and in the last lecture, we studied thermochemistry. Today, inshallah, is a very essential topic uh, in chemistry, uh, dealing with uh, solutions, the preparations of solutions, the different uh, concentrations of uh, solutions the driving force behind the formation of, of solutions. Uh, and also we will uh, cover uh, a special topic about uh, solubility, uh, which is also, uh, uh, which is, uh, belongs also to the concentrations of solutions, okay? Uh, Back to the first lecture, uh, when I classify the materials, I classify generally the materials to uh, pure materials and to mixtures, right? To mixtures. And the mixtures uh, was class classified to uh, two different types, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. Solutions is, are basically talking about homogeneous mixtures, homogeneous mixtures. So solutions is defined as uh, homogeneous mixtures of two or more components, homogeneous mixtures of two or more components, okay? Uh, but uh, one of them uh, can be uh, existing in, uh, in uh, large amounts and the other one maybe in uh, lower amounts, right? Uh, one maybe uh, is a major component, the other one maybe a minor component, right? In the mixtures. Uh, and based on that, we will define two different uh, uh, names or uh, two different uh, uh, elements in the, in the solutions, which are solids, and solvents, solids and the solvents, okay? Uh, basically, uh, solutions can be formed uh, from any of the states of matter, like uh, gas in gas, gas in solid, gas in uh, liquid, uh, liquid in solid, solid in liquid, all alternatives of mixing the different states of materials are available for the formation of solutions. And based on that, we will define uh, the solvent and we will define, define the solid. If you mix the two different states together, if you mix the two different states together, like uh, uh, a solute like uh, or uh, like uh, sodium chloride salt, like sodium chloride with water. One is solid and the other one is is liquid, right? Is liquid. So if you mix them, we have two different things that can be uh, that can you observe. The first one, based on the the amount of the salt and the amount of water. Uh, if I told you now. Uh, you have a, a, a cup filled with sodium chloride, filled with sodium chloride, full, full of sodium chloride, and you bought two liters of water. What do you think you will observe? Water will dissolve in the solid and will disappear the phase of liquid water, right? The phase of liquid will disappear, okay? Uh, which phase uh, is retained now? The solid. In that case, the solid will be the solute, will be the solvent, the solvent, will be the solvent. The solid will be the solvent. In contrast to what you generally expect, that water is always the solvent. 
So basically the rule, if you mix the two different states together, the phase that will be retained will be the solvent, will be the solvent, okay? And the phase that will disappear will be the solute. This is the case of mixing two different states together, two different states together. Of course, if the amount of water was large and you bought one uh, spoon of uh, sugar or one spoon of salt, sodium chloride, definitely the salt will disappear in the solution. And in that case, water will be the solvent and the salt will be the solute. This is the general case. This is what you expect, okay? But you should appreciate the general definition from the beginning. The solvent is always the material whose phase will retain after the formation of the solution. If both materials were from the same phase, from the same phase, then the one that has the larger quantity will be the solvent, will be the solvent. If they are of the same phase, of the same phase, okay? So liquid in liquid, the one that exists in the large amount will be the solvent, and the one that exists in the less amount will be the solute, okay? This is very simple and, and uh, very easy, okay? Actually, uh, when the solvent uh, is uh, water, and in case you uh, dissolve a solid uh, salt in water, the solution will be termed as aqueous solution, as aqueous or aqueous solution, aqueous solution, okay? This is a solution whose solvent is basically water, and the water as a miracle compound, uh, as I stated before, uh, it can dissolve large quantity of, of ionic salt and uh, of other materials also, which are not ionic even, okay? So, uh, so these solutions will be termed as aqua solutions, and the polarity of water is responsible for the great ability to dissolve several compounds, okay? Uh, this slide uh, shows the varieties of solutions that you make from different states of uh, materials, like uh, the air that you smell is basically a mixture of gases together, gas in gas, gas as a solid and the gas as a solvent, okay? And basically the, the face of the solution is, is gas. The other thing, if you look to the soda that uh, you drink, uh, this is basically a, a liquid, but uh, carbon dioxide is dissolved in, or the soda is dissolved in, in that liquid. So basically, this is a mixture of gas in liquid, and the, the, the face of the solution is liquid. Uh, hydrogen as a gas, when, uh, when it uh, dissolves in platinum, is uh, basically uh, an example for a gas in a solid, uh, uh, solution uh, and the alcohol in water this is a liquid in liquid mercury in silver or uh, drops of water in sugar this is liquid in solid dust in air dust in air is solid in gas solid in gas mixture solid in gas mixture of course one of the criteria for the solution is the homogeneity of the solid and the solvent Dust is existing everywhere in a homogeneous manner in the air. So this is a solution, solution of, of uh, solid in, in gas. Uh, solid in liquid, this is uh, any salt in water or even the seawater. Solid in solid, this is uh, alloys, stainless steels or steel or brass. Any alloy like this, this is basically solid in solid solution, solid in solid solution, okay? Uh, we have, uh, this is the hydration uh, in aqua solution, the driving force. If you have uh, sodium chlor chloride, for example, the, 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 the attractive force in the crystal is basically ionic, ionic, ionic force in the crystal lattice. 
when you dissolve sodium chloride in water, this ionic force is replaced by the uh, water ion interactions, water ion interactions, or the dipole. Uh, ion dipole interactions ion di that, that, that we have discussed in the liquid in the, the chapter of liquid the the ion dipole forces but here if you look uh, the negative ion like the chloride like the chloride is surrounded by water where the uh, hydrogen uh, ions of water is directly Attach it to the negative, to the negative ion, to the negative ion, and the opposite in the cation. The cation here is surrounded by water, but water uh, orient uh, themselves. The water molecules orient themselves uh, in the direction that the uh, oxygen atom, which has a uh, partially negative charge, is directly. Uh, surrounding the uh, cation, surrounding the cation to have the ionic force like this, okay? So uh, this is the way that uh, a hydration uh, takes place, the hydration takes place, okay? Uh, and this is, uh, of course, the geometry of uh, water molecule and the angle uh, between the OH groups is 100, 0, 0, 5, okay? Uh, aqua solutions are also classified to three different types. Aqua solutions are classified or are subdivided to three uh, categories. The first one is uh, strong electrolyte, strong electrolyte. And these electrolytes are the substances uh, 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 the solutes that will be dissolved in uh, water uh, are completely ionized. When dissolved in water, are completely ionized, uh, and therefore they conduct electricity efficiently. And examples for this are the ionic salts uh, like sodium chloride, uh, like the strong acids uh, as uh, HCl, sulfuric acid. Also strong bases like sodium hydroxide. Uh, and uh, basically when they dissolve in water, they dissociate completely to ions. And the ions will carry the, 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 the conduction of electricity, will carry the conduction of electricity. And this example for HCl here, and this example for sodium. So you do not have uh, a, a, a molecule uh, 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 as HCl in water, as a complete molecule. As I mentioned to you before, uh, the bonding in HCl is covalent, but when uh, you dissolve it in water, it dissociates completely to form H3O plus and Cl, Cl. So the bond is broken in, in, in water. Okay. The uh, second type is a weak electrolyte. Strong electrolyte number one, weak electrolyte number two. Uh, this is very similar to the other type, but the dissociation is not complete. When these materials are dissolved in water, they dissociate, but partially, but partially. Okay. This is called weak electrolyte. And examples for this are uh, the weak acids, for example, or the weak base, like acetic acid uh, or uh, calcium uh, hydro or uh, uh, ammonia. Ammonia, for example, is uh, an, a good example for uh, weak base. And uh, actually, uh, the conduction is uh, for electricity is much weaker than for strong Electron. And this example for the dissociation of acetic acid, this is acetic acid, it dissociates to give the acetate, but the dissociation is not uh, complete, it's not complete, maybe 5% or something like this. This is the dissociation. The third type is a non-electrolyte, and these materials, when dissolve in water, they dissolve, but they do not ionize. They, they do not get ionized. They do not get ionized. 
and the interns, they do not conduct electricity. They do not, because you, you do not have uh, ions. Uh, and the examples for this uh, are, uh, is uh, ethanol. When uh, you dissolve ethanol in water, it dissolves, but it, it will not conduct electricity because it doesn't uh, uh, get ionized, okay? So this is uh, the structure of ethanol, and uh, it can be dissolved in water because of the polarity in the bonds here, okay? It, it, it can be dissolved in water, but will not uh, get ionized, okay? Uh, why do solutions uh, form? We have two uh, reasons for the formation of uh, solution. The first one uh, is the thermodynamics, which depends on the uh, the uh, tendency, uh, the increasing tendency to uh, to get uh, to be disordered, to be disordered, or the degree of randomness. The degree of random when you mix two uh, different materials uh, together, uh, it doesn't make sense that everyone will be. Uh, uh, aligned to uh, a given side uh, uh, being uh, far from each other, but uh, normally you expect that they will mix together. They will mix together. So this is the thermodynamic, number one. And this is the only factor or the major factor for the formation of gas solutions, for gas solutions. The other thing is the attractiveness between the solid and the solvent, the attractiveness. Uh, and uh, there is a major rule here, which is, uh, which states that like dissolves like, like dissolves like polar compounds tends to dissolve, or polar solvents tend to dissolve polar compounds, and nonpolar solvents tend to dissolve, to dissolve nonpolar uh, compounds. Okay? Uh, and that's why SNO, which is polar, dissolves in, uh, in water. Uh, and non-polar uh, solvents uh, dissolve as well in non-polar, uh, uh, dissolve non-polar uh, substance. Uh, the, uh, and when solutions are formed, uh, sometimes uh, you can calculate the, the, the heat of solutions. Uh, and these are the amounts of heat involved when uh, or absorbed when one mole of a solid dissolves in a solvent at constant pressure to make a dilute solution. This is the definition for the heat of solution. This heat of solutions can, can, can be equal to zero. If this is an ideal solution and can be, of course, uh, negative uh, if the reaction is exothermic and it can be uh, positive if the reaction is, is uh, endothermic, okay? So uh, the steps involved in the uh, solution formation, number one, uh, you have uh, bonding in the uh, solids and the bonding in the solvents. You need to overcome this bonding to separate the particles uh, uh, a little uh, from each other, okay? So this will require the addition of energy. This will require to provide energy to separate the particles together, okay? And the ones that they are separated, so, so you, you will uh, need to, uh, to provide energy to separate the solid. You will need to provide energy to separate the solvent. And the finally, when uh, particles of solids and the solvents are uh, in contact or closer to each other, they will form a new bond, they will form or they will be attracted to each other, okay? And that, and that will uh, release energy, and that will release energy. So bond cleavage always requires to provide energy, but bond formation always release energy, okay? This is endothermic and this is exothermic. So overall, it depends on the nature of the components that you uh, uh, you are mixing together. Maybe the overall or the summation will be endothermic. Maybe the summation will be exothermic. Maybe the energy you provided to separate the solids and the solvent 
are exactly the same as the energy evolved when they interact together. In that case, the overall energy will equal to will be equal to zero if they are the same. If they are the same, and this is the case for the ideal solution. This is the case. So ideal solution delta H. This is a uh, a feature for the ideal solution. Ideal solution delta H equal to zero equal to zero so the energy you provide to separate the solid and the solvent is exactly the same as the energy release when solute interacts with with solid so basically the three steps is uh, as uh, mentioned here uh, on the board and the delta h of solution is basically the summation of the three different types delta h1 is the energy required to separate the solute and the delta H2 is the energy required to separate the uh, solvent and the delta H3 is the energy released when they, uh, the solute and the solvent interact uh, together, okay? And the here, if delta H equal to zero, this, is, uh, this will be called ideal solution. And other than this will be non-ideal, will be non-ideal, okay? Uh, Almost in, in ideal situation, almost equal attraction forces between solid and solid, uh, solid, solid, and solvent, uh, solvent uh, are exactly the same as uh, between the solid and, and the solvent. Okay? If delta H solution uh, is something other than zero, then the solution is non ideal. Okay? And this is explained in the uh, figure here. Uh, so to separate the solids, you need delta H1, uh, and this is uh, endothermic, and to separate the solvent as well, delta H2, and for these particles of the solid and the solvent to interact together, uh, it will release energy, which is delta H3, to form the solution. As mentioned here, and the delta H of solution is basically the summation of the three different types. Uh, the criteria to form a solution uh, is basically uh, is the amount of delta H, is the value of delta H, is it very large or small, is large or small. Uh, actually, if delta H of solution is large, whether uh, it was positive or negative, in that case, solution will not be formed, will not be form okay but if the value was small uh, whether it was positive or negative in that case solution will be will be formed and we'll have uh, several examples to explain for you this uh, criteria so the solution of a solid and a solvent to form a solution does not involve a chemical transformation so the the, the process of this dissolution is basically a physical uh, process, physical process, not a chemical uh, process, okay? Uh, as I said, the heat of solution uh, can be uh, positive or negative based on the nature of the, the solution. Uh, the, the, formation, uh, uh, the, 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 the solution formation uh, may follow the exothermic reaction or the endothermic reaction. For exothermic reaction, the energy of the unseparated solid and the solvent uh, in that level, and uh, you need delta H1 and the delta H2 to separate the particles from each other, and when they interact to, together, they release energy, but as you see, the amount of energy released is much higher than the summation of delta H1 and delta H2, so overall, the uh, the summation of delta H1, delta H2, and the delta H3 is basically negative, is negative. So delta H is less than zero, and this is the uh, definition of uh, exothermic uh, reactions. The opposite is for endothermic reactions. The uh, delta H3 is less than the summation of delta H1 plus delta H2 and therefore, delta H of solution will be positive. This can be also explained by potential energy diagram. The other, the, 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 these diagrams, the previous one, uh, 
uh, is actually represented by uh, enthalpy. Enthalpy and enthalpy uh, refers to the uh, the heat change at constant pressure. The heat change at constant pressure. But potential energy diagram can also be uh, comment on the uh, nature of the uh, reaction. So basically, uh, for endo for exothermic reaction. The potential energy of reactants, as I mentioned in the last uh, lecture, potential energy of the reactants is uh, higher than that of the products. So uh, energy will uh, be uh, released to the uh, surrounding, uh, and the, the opposite uh, is true for uh, endothermic reaction. So the uh, potential energy of reactants is less than the potential energy of products and therefore uh, energy will be supplied from the surrounding to the to the system okay so uh, as i said uh, if delta h of uh, solution formation is large whether it was positive or negative then solution will not form solution will not form let us imagine now the case of dis dissolving oil in water uh, at the beginning, you know that oil will not mix with with water. Okay, so how about the the, the interactions in oil, the the forces in oil? Actually, oil uh, oils are uh, nonpolar compounds. Nonpolar compounds. Okay, so uh, basically, the, the the bonding in in oil, you expect that this is the very weak London dispersion force. Very weak London dispersion force. So to separate the particles from each other, you need very small amount of energy, very small amount of energy, okay? So delta H1 is expected to be small positive, small positive. How about the water? Water is a strong molecule with strong forces. So you expect that uh, you need to supply a large uh, positive amount of energy, large amount of energy, you supply large, amount of energy. So delta H2 is largely positive. How about the interactions of oil and water? This is uh, a nonpolar uh, compound, the oil, and the water is a polar compound. The interaction is almost nil between uh, water and, and the molecule. So the delta H3, do you expect will be a large value or a small value? Uh, small. small value because the interaction is very weak. So delta H3 will be also negative. So if you look, small negative. So if you, if you take the summation for the three uh, values of delta H1 and two and three, uh, you will uh, find that the value is very large positive, very large positive, okay? And for that case, for the very large positive, the solution will not, form the solution will not form but if you look to the case of sodium chloride in water how about the bonding in sodium chloride the bonding in sodium this is ionic bond is a strong bond so you need to supply large energy to separate the particle from each other so basically delta h1 will be largely positive and the delta h2 for water is also largely positive and uh, there is a tendency uh, for water to dissolve sodium chloride. So there is interaction between uh, the ions and the dipoles of water. So you expect also that delta H3 will be large, well, large negative, large, large negative. So overall, the summation will be small positive, small positive. And in that case, solution will be formed. So the criteria for the formation of solution, if delta H is very large, solution will not be formed. If delta H is a little small, then solution can be, can be formed, okay? And uh, this is the case of oil. If you uh, mix oil with water, you will find that oil will float at the surface of, of water in contrast to the case of uh, sodium chloride in water will dissolve completely and will distribute in the in the solution. Uh, and this table uh, summarizes the cases of the solution formation 
in case of polar solvents and polar solute, okay, so you need large uh, energy to separate the solute, large energy positive to separate the solvent, and uh, delta H3 will be large, so overall uh, delta H of solution will be will be small, whether positive or negative. Uh, but for nonpolar solute, the delta H1 will be small. For polar solvent, delta H2 will be large. And delta H3, as they, uh, they, they have different uh, polarity, uh, delta H3 will be small, and delta H solution will be large, and no solution form. Nonpolar and nonpolar, the energy uh, the, the of solution will be small, and solution will be formed. And uh, the opposite here for nonpolar solvent in uh, with polar solid, uh, also uh, the delta H will be large, so solution will not will not be formed. Okay, the solubility is basically uh, a term of concentration. Is a term of concentration. Uh, specifically, it reflects the mass of solute uh, that is necessary to form a saturated solution with a given mass of solvent at a specific temperature. At a specific, because the solubility depend on temperature, depend on, and we will describe now the factors affecting the solubility. One of them is the temperature. One of them is that. So, so to measure the solubility, you need to measure it at a fixed temperature. At a fixed so this is the mass of solute required to form a saturated solution. A saturated solution. What is the saturated solution? So when you when you prepare a solution, you start adding the solids to the uh, the solvent. As long as the, the solvent can accommodate the uh, incoming solid. Uh, the solution will be termed non-saturated, non-saturated. Uh, the maximum concentration you can reach before precipitation, this is the saturated solution. This is the, so this is special uh, concentration, special concentration from the solids in the, in the solid. Uh, more than this, the solution, if the solution accommodated more than the uh, saturated concentration uh, under certain conditions, of course, we will call the, the solution as super saturated solution. Super so, so you have three different cases. Unsaturated, as long as the, the, the solvent can accommodate more solids, okay? Uh, and the saturated, this is the border case, okay? And the more than this, under non-equilibrium conditions, we will call the solution as super saturated solution. Super saturated solution. So the unit of solubility, basically any unit of concentration can be used. But generally, in textbooks, they use this unit as gram solid per 100 gram solvent. Gram solid per 100. How, how many grams of solids that can be dissolved in 100 gram of the of the solvent or mole solute bare gram bare gram solvent. Okay. A saturated solution is a solution containing the maximum amount of solute soluble in a definite amount of solvent at a given temperature, which is the equilibrium concentration. And this slide explains the difference between the saturated and uh, unsaturated and saturated and super saturated solutions, okay? So you can see here, you cannot see any precipitation, even in the saturated, but this is uh, uh, the border state that uh, crystals uh, started or will start to aggregate together to precipitate if you added any more of the, of the solid to the solution. And uh, the last picture here is for sober saturated, for sober saturated solution. Uh, so sober saturated is a solution containing more solids than the equilibrium amount. It is unstable and tends to move toward the uh, saturation under uh, proper conditions. The solubility and equilibrium. Uh, actually, the, the, the case of uh, dissolution is uh, is uh, an equilibrium process 
between the uh, solid solvent and the solution so this is the equation for equilibrium okay uh, so uh, all the uh, the the laws of uh, equilibrium apply for the case of uh, dissolution uh, and we will see this uh, when uh, we investigate the effect of of temperature okay uh, factors affecting solubility number one the temperature pressure concentration and the nature of solid and solid let us uh, discuss the effect of temperature at the beginning for uh, a gas in liquid for a gas in liquid uh, uh, if you imagine uh, yes okay saturated and uh, there is no rel uh, relation between saturated and uh, concentration, but uh, uh, saturated solution has the uh, a concentration term which is called the solubility. Solubility. So concentration exists in 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 the three uh, different uh, solutions. The unsaturated, the saturated, and the supersaturated. But for the case of the saturated, the concentration is termed as solubility. It's termed as solubility. Okay, right? You got it? Okay. So, uh, if you imagine now, you have a beaker uh, or a bottle of uh, carbon dioxide. You have a bottle of uh, beverage uh, drinks like this. And you open the uh, the bottle, uh, the the, uh, the 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 liquid in the bottle uh, will contain uh, carbon dioxide, right? With a specific concentration, right? With a specific concentration. First, le let us uh, imagine if you heat up the the bottle. What do you think about the concentration of the gas? the concentration will will decrease in the liquid because it will uh, dissipate to the atmosphere right okay okay so the, for the case of gas in liquid uh, normally at constant temperatures the solubility of gases uh, decrease with temperature okay uh, also the reason for this is uh, complicated but uh, basically uh, is a thermodynamic reason, is a thermodynamic reason related to the randomness and uh, attraction. Okay? Uh, this was for the, the gas in liquid. How about the effect of temperature on the solutions uh, formed from solids and the liquids in liquids? Uh, in that case, we will consider the equilibrium and we will investigate the thermodynamics of the reaction, if the reactions are endothermic or exothermic, and uh, we will apply uh, Le Chatelet principle uh, for that uh, effect. Okay, so Le Chatelet principle is stated that if you have a given equilibrium which is sustained uh, under, under given conditions, and if you interrupt this equilibrium, the direction of the reaction will go uh, in the way uh, retard retarding the external influence that you applied uh, in the way to restore the equilibrium again, to restore the equilibrium again, okay? I think you heard about the Chatelier principle. You heard about it? I think in the high school you you hear uh, Le Chatelet principle. I think you heard about it. This is uh, uh, in the high school they always uh, uh, discuss this principle. Okay. So anyway, for endothermic reaction, for endothermic reaction, uh, heat exists uh, as a reactant, right? As a reactant in the reaction. Okay, so if you increase the temperature 
uh, look at, at the, the equilibrium here. Here is a uh, solute is interacting with solvent to form a solution. So if you force the equilibrium to go from left to right, then you basically uh, forcing the solution to form and the concentration of the solution increase. The concentration of the solution increase. But the opposite is true. If you force it, the solution to, uh, to, to go in the opposite direction, to, to separate the solid from the solvent, then uh, the, 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 the concentration of the solution will get decreased, will decrease. How about the effect of temperature for endothermic reaction? If you increase the temperature in endothermic reaction, the reaction should shift to, uh, to right in the way that uh, decrease the effect of the temperature because the reaction is endothermic. So increasing the temperature in that case will shift the reaction to right, increasing the solubility, increasing the solubility. So for endothermic reactions, increasing temperature will, will increase the solubility, will increase the solubility. The opposite is true for exothermic reaction. If you increase the temperature for exothermic reaction, then the solubility will decrease. The solubility will, will decrease. How about the, if you cool down the opposite? If you cool down the opposite. So if you cool down this reaction, which is exothermic, then the solubility will increase. The solubility will increase. So if you cool down, the reaction will shift from left to right, increasing the solubility, increasing the solubility, okay? How about the effect of pressure? The same examples that I gave to you, uh, normally uh, the manufacturer uh, compress the, uh, the soda in uh, beverage under high pressure, very high pressure, okay? Uh, but when you open, when you open the the the, the bottle, uh, you hear uh, like a clack, like click. Okay, so this reflects the 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 the, the fast uh, disappearance, the fast uh, uh, release of the soda from the bottle to the atmosphere, which has a very low uh, concentration of carbon dioxide. Okay, so basically the concentration of gas in the liquid depend on the external pressure, depend on the external pressure. So if the, the, the pressure is, is uh, large, then the solubility of the gas in liquid will be, will be large. But if the, the, concent or if the pressure of the gas is low, the, the concentration of gas in the liquid will also be low. And therefore, when you open the, 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 the bottle of the beverage and you, you, you keep it some time, you will not feel the soda after that, right? Because the soda will escape to the, to the atmosphere, okay? So this is the effect of pressure uh, on uh, solubility of, of gases. Pressure has a significant effect uh, for these solutions. Uh, carbonated beverage are always put in that high pressure of carbon dioxide to ensure high concentration. The first thing that you, uh, occurs when you open a can of soda results from the escape of gas carbon dioxide because under these conditions, the pressure of CO2 uh, above the solution is much lower than, the, uh, than that used in the bottling process, okay? Uh, and this is explained here uh, in that uh, equilibrium uh, as well. Uh, consider a closed container that partially filled with uh, a solution of gas and liquid. Uh, the gas molecules uh, enter uh, and leave uh, the solution uh, in that equilibrium, in, uh, in the same rate at equilibrium, the, the, the rate of... Uh, of uh, getting the gas outside is equal to the, the, the rate of uh, entering the gas to the solution. This is an equilibrium. <coughs> if pressure, the external pressure is suddenly increased, the number of gas molecules, periodic volume increased, and the gas enters the solution 
at a higher rate. Uh, this will uh, follow another case that when the gas uh, concentration in the gas phase or in the solution increase, the rate of escaping the gas from the solution increase as well until they become uh, the same again. So equilibrium is restored once again, but at higher uh, solubility, at higher solubility of the gas. And this is explained here in this figure. At the beginning, uh, the rate of uh, entering the gas from the gas phase to the solution uh, equal to the rate of the, uh, releasing the gas from the, solution, from the solution to the gas. And if you increase the pressure here, uh, the rate of uh, entering the gas increase, but after some time, they become again uh, the same, uh, both rates, uh, but at high, high solubility, okay? <coughs> and this is explained by Henry's law, and uh, I, I remember I, uh, I discussed Henry's law with you uh, before. The concentration of gas, uh, dissolved gas in the solution, is proportional to the partial pressure on top of the on top of the solution, and the K is Henry's Henry's uh, constant. Okay, uh, Henry's constant is actually uh, verified uh, for uh, dilute solutions and for gases that do not dissociate uh, in or react with the solvent. So. Uh, the gas should not react with the solvent and should not dissociate in the solid. So basically, uh, oxygen is uh, a candidate uh, for Henry's law in uh, in water, but HCl is not uh, is not suitable because HCl dissociates to uh, protons and uh, chloride ions. So exercise a certain soft drink is bottled so that a bottle at uh, 200 uh, to uh, 250 degrees Celsius contain carbon dioxide at a pressure of five atmosphere over the liquid, and this is a partial pressure of carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, calculate the equilibrium concentration of CO2 in the soda, and after the bottle is open, uh, so in the soda and after the bottle uh, is open. Okay, the Henry's law constant for CO2 in aqueous solution is this value at 25 degrees. So uh, you can uh, um, uh, see that the, 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 the pressure of CO2 in the, in the, in the bottle the, uh, in, the, in the bottle itself uh, before opening is five atmosphere. So carbon dioxide is compressed to five atmosphere in the bottle, okay? So after you open, after you open the, the, the bottle, uh, the pressure uh, became, uh, this is the, 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 the pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere, the normal atmosphere. So after you open, after you open the, the, the bottle, uh, the, the, the bottle will be subjected to very, very low pressure. So now is asking to calculate the concentration of CO2 in the bottle before opening and after opening using Henry's constant. So basically you can apply in Henry's law before opening the concentration will be uh, 0 0.16 mole per liter, okay? Based on the five atmosphere uh, of CO2 before opening. So, uh, but after opening, the concentration becomes 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 5. So this is very, very low concentration of carbon dioxide because the pressure uh, outside is very low, very, very low. So this is a huge difference between the case before and the after and the after opening, okay? <coughs> <coughs> The effect of structure on the solubility uh, always uh, similar uh, compounds of similar polarity they dissolve efficiently together, and those of opposite polarity they do not dissolve efficiently with each other. 
okay so basically depending on the structure of the material if it has uh, hydrogen bonding it has uh, uh, tendency to form uh, polar uh, uh, bondings like this so uh, depending on the structure of the material we can expect the degree of dissolution of different materials together so basically uh, vitamins uh, a d e and the k they all are fat soluble and if uh, if the physician describe for you to take calcium or like this they will always uh, advise to uh, to to take uh, milk with with uh, vitamin d because vitamin d is uh, non-polar non-polar uh, the nature of uh, non-polarity is large in vitamin vitamin d and the vitamin a so they are fat soluble they are fat soluble. so you need to drink milk with with uh, vitamin d the, uh, the 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 other case for vitamin c or vitamin b they are water soluble so you can take it with water uh, that's it okay so this is the structure of vitamin a for example so you can see that the, the long uh, chain here of non-polar compounds only one single group of oh exists here in contrast to the vitamin c you can see large groups of hydroxyl groups in uh, vitamin c so it is water water soluble or hydrophilic this is uh, water loving uh, or hydrophilic this is a water soluble so hydrophilic or hydrophilicity okay the 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 the, the love of uh, uh, of water okay this is called hydro hydrophilicity uh, the opposite to this is the hydrophobic nature or water fearing water water fearing okay so now uh, we will uh, introduce the terms of uh, concentrations and the concentrations are basically classified according to the amount of solute in a given amount of solvent, this is number one, mass per mass, mass per mass, mass of solute in a given mass of solvent or a given mass of solution. And uh, uh, subcategories for the first definition here is the mole fraction, mole percent, mass fraction, mass percent, and the molality. The other classification is the mass of solute in a given volume of the solution in a given volume of the solution and uh, to this category uh, molarity and normality uh, belong okay so uh, basically we'll discuss all these uh, types of concentrations the five types of concentration number one i think you heard about mole fraction before and you are very familiar with the mole fraction. basically the ratio of the number of moles of a given compound component in a solution to the total number of moles of the component. And this is a formula that you can use XA equal to NA over the summation of N in the solution. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, XA is unitless. Okay. Mole fraction is uh, unitless. And the summation of XI over I equal to one. I think you are familiar with this as well. The mole percent, if you multiply the mole fraction, by 100 this is the mole percent the mole percent the same for mass fraction is basically the ratio of the mass of a given component in a solution to the total mass of the solution and the same formula uh, very similar formula apply for uh, the mass fraction and of course the summation of the mass fraction over i equal to to i and if you multiply the mass fraction by 100 this is is the mass percent so basically if i give you a solution labeled in the lab uh, as uh, 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride normally this is a mass percent this is a mass percent which means that 0 0.9 sodium chloride was dissolved in 1990 uh, in 99.1 uh, a gram of uh, water or dissolve it in 100 gram of solute. What is the difference between uh, 
uh, 99.1 gram water and 100 gram solution. Once I, I once you see the, the word solution, it means that you have solid and the solvent in this inside. So uh, from now and on, you should differentiate between solid, solvent, solution. If I asked you, uh, if, I, if I told you the density of a given solution is 1 kg per liter, kg per liter, 1 kg per liter, what does it mean? It means that the, the mass of the solution, mass of the solution, what, what is the mean, what, 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 what does it mean, the mass of solution? Mass of solid plus solvent, solid plus solvent. The mass of solution over the volume of solution equal to 1 kg per liter, okay? So density of solution is different from the molarity of the solution. We'll see this in the, the next examples, okay? Uh, molality, this, uh, I think this is a new uh, term for you. The molality is actually the number of moles of solid in one kg of solvent. The number of moles of solid in one kg of solvent. Solvent, you should uh, distinguish what I'm saying, okay? Not solution. One kg of solvent. Okay, and the rule for this, uh, this is from the definition, number of moles of solid over the mass of solvent, mass of solvent, okay, in kg. In kg, yes, in kg, if you divide by a, a, another mass, this will not be the molality. It should be in kg. If I, if I didn't give you the, the mass of solvent in kg, you should convert it to kg, okay? Hmm? Not in gram. This is the definition. You should apply. You should apply, get applied by the, 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 the definition. The mass of solid, or the number of moles of solid in 1 kg of the solvent. Okay? So, uh, the, 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 the number of moles of solids, of course, uh, it can be uh, written uh, in the form the mass of solid over the molar mass of the solid. Right? So just see you, uh, you convert N to uh, mass per molar mass, okay? This is the number of moles. And the mass of solvent, which is here, is supposed to be in kg. If you bought it in gram, you should put 1,000 in the uh, numerator, right? Right? Okay? So this is a general form for the calculations of when you put 1,000. When? When you put the 1,000. Yes. Uh, yeah. The unit will be ground. Yeah. Uh, no, no. They are both together here. 1,000 over this. This is the mass in kg. I'm asking about the unit. Is what? The unit. Is it like here? Yeah. No, still, still in uh, kg. The definition is still in kg. Because basically this is gram. And if... Uh, the unit of 1,000, what, 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 do you think, what, what, is the, what is the unit of 1,000? Is what? No. Is what? What is the unit of uh, 1,000? What is the unit? You said uh, kg? No, it's not kg. Is anyone, uh, uh, do anyone uh, does anyone know the, the unit of uh, 1,000? Yes. So this is a conversion factor, right? A conversion factor. So the unit for 1,000 is gram per kg. Gram per, right? Because the, the, the conversion factor is gram per kg. So you can uh, cancel gram from here with gram with here. So overall, the unit will be per kg. Per kg, okay? So this is the definition for molality. Okay? You got it? Okay. So this is the rule for the calculations of the molality. Okay? And all the terms are defined here. So the mass of the solid in gram and the molar mass is in gram per mole. And everything is known here. 
by its unit. Okay. So uh, the new concentration term is the molarity, and I think uh, you heard about molarity before. Molarity uh, is basically the number of moles of solids in one liter of solution. What's the difference between uh, molarity and molality? Molality per one kg solvent. Molarity per one liter solution. The, do you recognize the difference? Okay. Okay. So this is where uh, the number of moles of solid dissolved in one liter of the solution. So uh, from the definition, the symbol of molarity is capital M, N over uh, V in liter. So you can also uh, replace N by mass over molar mass. And this is the volume in liter. And uh, of course, if you want to convert uh, to, to represent the volume in milliliter, you can as well uh, multiply uh, W uh, by uh, 1000 as well as, as we did in the, the molality. Okay. So basically, you can uh, rearrange this uh, formula to appear in that uh, simple uh, structure uh, the mass of solid equal to uh, the molar mass of the solid, molar mass of the solid, of the solid, not the solvent. I, I, I may ask you uh, to confuse you in the exam. This is uh, because the, the N, this N in the, in the formula here is for solid. So if you want to uh, convert it, uh, you convert it to a mass of solid, over molar mass of solute because this is N of solute, right? Not the solvent, okay? Not the solvent. So the, 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 uh, the final rule here is the mass of solute equal to molarity times uh, molar mass of solute times the volume uh, of solution in uh, liter, in, in liter. And this is the formula that in, in the laboratory you use to, uh, to prepare uh, uh, given concentrations of a given material. If I asked you to prepare 0.1 molar sodium chloride, 100 milli, 100 milli liter of 0.1 molar sodium chloride, you go to the uh, periodic table and you calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride. This is the molar mass, okay? This is the molar mass. And then I asked you to prepare 0.1 molar. This is 0.1 M, capital M is 0.1. Uh, and the, uh, the volume I asked you to prepare uh, 100 milli. This is 0.1 liter. 0.1 liter. So you calculate the mass of sodium chloride that you need to go to the balance and the weight. And once you weigh this uh, mass of sodium chloride, you come to a, 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 a flask, a measuring flask. Uh, you dissolve the amount in a beaker at the beginning and you quantitatively transfer this amount to a measuring flask uh, that has a volume of 100 milliliter and you shake well, you mix well. This is uh, 0.1 molar sodium chloride. So this is the rule to prepare the uh, concentrations of sodium chloride. The normality is the number of equivalents of solute per liter of solution. And this is uh, equivalence. This equivalence is very similar to the number of moles, but it depends on the, the nature of the, of the reaction because they are, uh, the, the, the number of equivalent is basically the mass over the equivalent mass of the material, not the uh, molar mass, the equivalent mass, okay, of the material. And actually, the uh, equivalent mass and equivalent depend on the reaction that takes place, okay? Uh, so for acid-based reactions, the equivalent mass is basically the molar mass over the number of replaceable hydrogen or hydroxide. Yes, this what, what you, you will see now. Okay, uh, the, the, the difference depends on the nature of the reaction. Uh, as I said, for uh, acid-base reactions, for example, uh, the equivalent is basically the mass of acid or base that furnish or accept exactly one mole of protons, one mole of protons. If you look to HCl, it has only one proton. So the molar mass is exactly the same as the, the equivalent mass. And the, the, the relationship between molarity and the normality 
they are the same. No problem in HCl. But in H2SO4, it can furnish two protons, not one proton. Okay? So uh, the, the, the molar mass deals with H2SO4 as a one unit, but the, the, the equivalent mass uh, deals with half of the amount, only one proton. It, it requires only the mass that furnish only one proton from H2SO4. So if the molar mass of H2SO4 is 98, then the equivalent mass equal to uh, 98 over 2, which is uh, 49. So therefore, the, the equivalent mass uh, is uh, in all cases uh, uh, may equal the molar mass or uh, or may be less than the molar molar mass okay and the opposite is true for the relationship of molarity and the normality the, mo the uh, molarity may be equal to the normality and may be less than the normality may be less than the so this is for acid base uh, reactions and for sodium hydroxide you you look to the number of replaceable OH as well for sodium hydroxide the molar mass is exactly the same as equivalent mass but for calcium hydroxide the molar mass is double the the equivalent equivalent so this is the, the rule for uh, acid base reaction how about the oxidation reduction reaction for oxidation reduction reactions the equivalent mass uh, or the equivalent is defined as the quantity of oxidizing or reducing agent that can accept or furnish one mole of electrons. One mole of electrons. Look at this uh, equation. This is a, a permanganate uh, in acid medium. Uh, the equation is actually balanced from uh, uh, the, the terms of mass and balanced also from the terms of a charge. This is uh, one negative charge, eight plus with five negative, so overall we have how many uh, plus here? This is one negative, and this is uh, five, so six negative with eight. So we have here in that side we have two plus. This is the same way for this side; it has also two two plus. So the equation is balanced uh, in terms of mass and in terms of of a charge. But uh, for every single molecule of potassium permanganate here, it requires five electrons. This is not the definition of the equivalent. Is asking, is defining here for oxygen reduction is the, is the, is the amount of the, this material of permanganate that furnish a single electron, a single electron. So you need to uh, divide the molar mass by five, by five for this equation. So you balance the equation, and then you uh, uh, divide the, the, the molar mass over the number of uh, electrons in the balanced equation. This is the definition of equivalent in case of oxidation reduction reaction. The third case is for salt formation, for the reactions of salt formation. The equivalent mass of a salt equal to the molar mass over the number of ions times the, the its valency times it's it's villain and usually we take the cations the cations so the sodium chloride equivalent mass equal to molar mass over one but for uh, sodium phosphate equivalent mass equal to molar mass over three which is the number of uh, sodium cations times the charge of the cations which is plus one so overall the the, the mass uh, the equivalent mass is is this way uh, so normality is basically the number of equivalents over the volume of the solution and now we could calculate the number of equivalents based on the different different reaction so you can also uh, uh, replace the number equivalent uh, by the, the mass of the solid over the equivalent mass to be very similar to the molarity and finally you will have the rule uh, that the mass of solid equal to normality times equivalent mass times the volume of the solution in liter. And this is one example. A solution is prepared by mixing one gram of ethanol with 100 gram of water, okay? So this is the mass of water, the solvent, and this is the mass of the solid, the ethanol. We give a final volume of 101 uh, milliliter. Number one, calculate the molarity. How can you calculate the molarity? Very simple. You apply the rule, molarity equal to the mass of solid over the molar mass of solid uh, times the volume of the solution. 
Everything is known here. The mass of solid is one gram. The molar mass of the solid, you can calculate it from the periodic table to be 46.0.7. And the volume of the solution is given here, 101 uh, milliliter. So you calculate the molarity. Number two, the mass percent. You have the mass of ethanol and you have the mass of water. So you can uh, divide one over 101. 101, which is the mass of water plus the mass of, of ethanol. This is the mass percent mole fraction. So you can calculate the number of moles of gram, uh, or the number of moles of ethanol, if you know the molar mass of ethanol. And you can also calculate the number of moles of water, and then you calculate the mole fraction. The molality. Uh, what do you need for molality? You need the number of moles of solid. You know the mass. Uh, and uh, you divide by the mass of the solvent. The mass of the solvent is here. So, uh, but uh, first you convert it to kg. You convert it to kg to calculate the molality. Uh, so everything is very simple here, and everything is described on the board here. The mass percent is uh, can be calculated very easily uh, to be uh, zero point nine nine percent. The mass, uh, the, the, the mole fraction also can be calculated to be uh, 0.00389, uh, and then you can calculate the molality to be 0.217 mole per kilogram. The, uh, this example is interesting actually for the water in the battery. Uh, the electrolyte in automobile storage battery is uh, 3.75 molar sulfuric acid solution that has a density of 1.23 gram. Calculate the mass percent molality and normal. So uh, we need just to uh, understand everything. What is the mass of the solid? What is the mass of the solvent? What is the volume of the solution? All this we need to, to know. Uh, the information provided here is the molarity. But the molarity is basically reflecting the number of moles of solid in one liter of solution. Number of moles of solid in one liter solution. And it gave you also the density, which is the mass of solid plus solvent. Mass of solid plus solvent. And also one liter solution. And also in one liter solution. So basically the density is 1.23 gram per milliliter, which is 100 uh, 1,230 uh, gram per liter, okay? This is actually uh, means that uh, uh, 1,230 gram solution, which is sulfuric plus water in every liter of solution, okay? Uh, the molarity is, is something different, which means that uh, we have 3.75 mole, which is basically, uh, if you convert it to a mass, uh, if you uh, multiply it by the molar mass of sulfuric acid, so uh, this would become 368 gram of sulfuric acid. So basically in that solution, in every one liter solution, we have 1,230 gram sulfuric plus water. And we, we have as well, uh, not, uh, we, uh, we have from the definition of molarity, in every one liter, we have 368 grams sulfuric. So the remaining from this uh, and this uh, will basically the mass of, of water, the mass of water. And uh, by knowing this, uh, you could calculate the mass of water in one liter of the solution. So basically, if you, if you know the mass of uh, sulfuric and you know the mass of uh, water, right now, so you can uh, define any term of the concentration. The first one uh, uh, is asking to calculate the mass percent. So basically you can substitute directly, you know the mass of sulfuric and the mass of water. So uh, the, the, the mass percent of ethanol will be 29.9%. And if you want to calculate the molality, this is the rule, the molality uh, will equal to uh, 4.35 uh, molar. And if you want to calculate the normality for sulfuric acid, normality equal to uh, molarity uh, times two, times two, because it has two replaceable hydrogen, 
okay? So the normality is larger. So you, you, you multiply uh, 3.75 by 2 to be 7.5 uh, normal. And coming to here, uh, we uh, we finish the lecture today, uh, and uh, we will continue in the solution uh, next lecture as well. Uh, so uh, solutions will takes two uh, successive lectures to uh, to be finished. Inshallah. Uh, until I will see you, I. Uh, I wish for you all uh, godness and uh, I will see you next lecture, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.